G'day there. You're watching the Aussie BIM Guru, and today I've got a fairly quick video with a platform I'd like to share that helps you create 360 panoramic experiences using Revit, Twinmotion, and finally the platform itself. I'm not being promoted to make this video, it's just a really great platform, and it does have a free version available, um, as well as a more advanced paid version. So today I'll be using Autodesk Revit, um, in this case uh, 2022. Um, I'm also going to be using Twinmotion, the trial 2022. 2022.2.3. I'm not going to be running it from inside Revit using direct link. In this case, I'm going to be using a plugin called Datasmith uh, to migrate our model to Twinmotion. And finally, what, what I'll focus on primarily will be the M Memento 360 web platform, which we'll use to set up a 360 interactive panoramic experience. So I'll cover firstly how you can prepare a 360 experience. I won't do the full modeling workflow, but I will roughly run through how I've taken a Revit model, exported it to Datasmith, imported it to Twinmotion and modified the model to make it more suitable for an experience like this. From there, we'll look at setting up the experience. So using what are called hotspots to navigate around the experience, how you can link the 360s together into a collection, connect them to a floor plan and finally share the outcome. So um, without further ado, we'll just jump straight in and make a solution. Um, you can follow along as long as you've got access to all that software. Um, Revit is technically the only one that needs money to be accessed. The others do have free versions available. Um, if I am talking too fast, just a reminder, you can slow me down using the YouTube settings. So firstly, I'll show you what I actually mean by a 360 panora panoramic experience. So in this case, I've created an experience on the, on the Memento 360 platform, which we'll run through a little bit later. Um, but the final outcome effectively allows me to look around in 360 on the spot. And whilst that's nothing really new, we've been able to do this in a lot of platforms. The great thing about Memento is it allows you to link experiences together through hotspots. And you can also add notes and do all sorts of things. Um, and this allows me to effectively create an experience that immerses me in the model more readily without relying on a 360 fly through or a resource intensive EXE based experience for the client. And it's very easily shareable via the web. So let's just jump straight into the first step of the workflow. In this case, this is actually working with a Revit model. So in this case, I'm just dealing with my remake of my basic sample project which you can find over on my course platform, courses.bimguru.education, 100% uh, free. If you do want to use this model as well, perfectly up to you. Um, I've used um, models of all sizes with Memento. The good thing about it is really all we're going to be dealing with is the image-based output from a rendering platform. So ultimately, even if you have a very large model, you're not going to burden that file size onto your client when you share the final outcome. So in this case, uh, really all I'm going into Revit to do is export uh, via Datasmith to Twinmotion. So the Datasmith plugin uh, works with both Unreal and Twinmotion. I found I had to actually go and access the uh, Twinmotion specific plugin uh, from the Unreal website as opposed to using the Unreal specific plugin. Even though they do say they're the same, one of them did receive updates more recently. So once this model finishes upgrading, because by default, I keep it in 2020. Um, I'll just briefly show you what I'm exporting. And the method of exporting is very straightforward. There's no real tricks to it. So here we go. So this is just really a remake of that house that you're probably quite familiar with. Um, really, I've just exported it as it comes um, using Datasmith. I haven't had to configure any settings. They are just the default. And then I've exported to a Datasmith file. In this case, UA Datasmith is the format. Um, if I do just quickly maybe show an example of what that looks like, I've already exported this before. Um, once I'm over in Twinmotion, which is here, um, I might for now just make a new scene. And all you have to do is go to Import, Open, uh, pick your uh, Datasmith file, and generally um, I will keep Hierarchy, Process All, usually I set light settings to Twinmotion default. Um, Generally, I don't use substitution tables, but there is a really great set of tutorials over on the Revit Kids channel if you want to learn a little bit more about that. But effectively, Datasmith does most of the heavy lifting for us and brings in our objects. They all have relationships to each other and understand uh, instances of families. Typically, you'll have, depending on the height of your model, you might want to get rid of this floor. Um, and you may technically want to get rid of lights, depending on whether they're problematic. Um, from here, it's really just a matter of substituting materials and objects until you're happy with the scene. Um, just some very quick tips, even though this isn't really a twin motion tutorial. 
Uh, when you substitute a material, uh, typically it will look for all instances or occurrences of that material. So if I just look for a nature or ground cover based material, um, notice that if I hover over an instance of grass, currently I've got my setting not to replace all, all instances. Generally by default, you're gonna have this setting uh, replace material as your default. And now you'll see that it looks for all occurrences of that material. So if your Revit model has very good material management, you'll be in luck and you'll be able to take advantage of that. Often I find I do need to scale up textures as well, uh, just to a more reasonable size. Um, now with uh, vegetation, you can also use, there's a, there's a vegetation dedicated tool, vegetation paint, um, which you can often just paint certain types of grasses. And I think I don't want to use detail grass, I just want to use normal grass. And you can pick mixtures, densities and combinations, maybe less of this one, more of that one. And from there you effectively are painting and removing grass from your site. So it's not too difficult, it just takes a little bit of time and you will have to finesse the edges um, to make sure that you don't paint grass obviously over man-made surfaces. Um, if you want to replace objects, you can use a full proxy workflow technically by getting an instance of an object and then in this case selecting all instances of that particular object. It will usually find all instances that are similar to it. So in this case, you can see it hasn't found the chairs across the table. So it won't necessarily always find everything, but I can just take these eight chairs and right click, replace object. It's gonna ask me what object or objects I want to use. Um, let's in this case, look for a dining chair. We might have just, just look for chair instead. Now, depending how you configure your families, they may not cleanly substitute. Uh, for twin motion objects. For example, you can see some of these didn't actually rotate, but it's fairly easy, depending on the setup, how to rotate them. We can see now I've just really quickly substituted that particular set of objects. So once you're pretty happy with your scene, you might end up with something that looks a little bit like this. And from here, we're gonna set up a panoramic renders out of twin motion and these don't take very long to create we can see now i've more or less replaced all my objects i've placed down some vegetation in the scene um, i'm not running on the most hot computer at the moment and it's still keeping up um, but i've replaced objects added some people some objects some decorations as you can see unlike enscape twin motion does have some animated assets which is pretty cool um, but otherwise i've really just set up the, all the rooms that i want to render in my experience. Um, now in this case I did actually remove all my lights um, in Twin Motion just because I'm going to do daytime renders and instead all I've got is just an emissive material which originally was emissive in Revit uh, but in this case we can see that we do have a glow in this case coming from this particular material so I've just kept that glow um, but otherwise there's no real tricks here it's just an experience with materials swapped over replaced and some objects placed in to make it look a little bit more uh, convincing to the viewer. So if I do want to create a panorama, I'm going to want to come down to the media tab, panorama. I'm going to want to be roughly in the middle of where my shot is. So let's add an additional shot uh, to this particular experience. Maybe let's add a shot uh, sitting at the dining table. So I'm going to create pano at that point. And in this case, um, I'll just add one shot for now. To render them, you're gonna to wanna to go to export. And in this case, you're gonna to wanna to go to panorama. And typically you'll want to export multiple. Now I've already exported these, so I'm just gonna export the additional one. And then we can see we've got panorama 10 ready to go. And it's as simple as starting export, finding a folder where you'd like to save this. Um, let's just call this one additional. Okay, maybe I wanna just select folder. It's gonna name it automatically. Um, now currently I'm saving this to a project folder, I believe. No, I'm actually saving it to a project folder. Here we go. So it should render out to this particular folder. And as you can see, they don't take very long to render, um, even though they are using a path tracer. You see I've put a little bit of a flower into my building there by accident. Oh well. And what I'll do is I'll set up a new experience just using a couple of panoramas just to demonstrate the concept. So we can see that the panoramic image by default looks a little bit strange, but in a 360 viewer, it will make a lot more sense. 
So let's just say for now, we just want to focus on this and maybe an image of the kitchen. So I'm just going to make a temporary folder and just give these temporary names. Just because I already have a copy of this on my Memento 360 platform. Um, what I've also exported from Revit is just a little set of floor plans. I'm also going to connect those to my experience as well. So on Memento 360, um, I'm going to want to go back to the start, um, go to My Media and Upload. And in this case, I'm going to upload panoramas. So I'm just going to upload those two temporary panoramas. And we'll create a new project from these. We can see I've already uploaded the few before, um, but I'll show you how I've set up the final experience by just using these two as an example. So they shouldn't take too long to upload. There we go. Um, let's just call this Temp Kitchen. And let's call this one Temp Dining. From here, I'm gonna to wanna to go to Collections, create a new collection, and just call this Temporary Views at 360s. You're gonna to wanna to pick the 360s that you want. And in this case, we're going to add them to temporary views. This should now have two 360s available. And once you click on one of the 360s, it's gonna put you straight into a preview of the viewer. And as you can see, it successfully unwraps the 360, no problems. Um, but what you can do with this, there's a few options. Um, for example, you can import and export annotations if you're using the non-free version. But if you right click on a spot such as here, it prompts you to be able to put certain types of annotations. For example, I have a standard or a hotspot based annotation. Um, there's various types of hotspots that can take you to links, embeds, audio, video, etc. Um, in this case, I'm gonna choose navigation. And I'm gonna say in this case, go to the table. From here, I'm gonna target another 360 in my collection. In this case, I'm gonna to go to my temporary dining and I can make the marker a push pin. I can create custom markers on the non-free version of this. Um, which is great when you want to do things like have two panoramas, one with the lights off, one with the lights on, and hit a light switch to turn the lights on, for example. Um, but in this case, I'm just going to use the push pin, and then I'm going to click on this. Automatically, it tells you, would you like to go to this one? I'm going to say yes, and here I am. And then I can just make another one and effectively go back in the other direction. So I can say go to the kitchen. And effectively, we can create uh, an experience based on this. So by hooking all these shots together and very quickly just using push pins to connect them, we've now created an experience, in this case, a very simple one. Um, let's say, for example, we want to put a note here as well. This is a nice cooktop. And from these, we can then share this experience with a client. So if I go back uh, to, in this case, uh, my collections, I can also connect a floor plan to them if I want, um, but I'll, I'll probably just quickly do that. Add a link plan. I'm gonna connect this floor plan that I've uploaded. And from here, I can go to that plan and actually say where these shots are on the plan as well. So from here, I'm gonna say, this is the kitchen and this is the dining. And you can see it's very quick, very easy. So from here, I can share my experience. I can share or embed a link, create a link. And now I have a link, which I can basically just now share with anyone, which creates both the slide viewer, but also the 360 viewer, as well as notes that I can look at. And also other points of navigation I can go to. And once your browser has cached a point of navigation, it's almost instantaneous to go between them. So you can see through using this viewer, you really can immerse your client without forcing them to go through a very heavy or complex or software um, heavy experience. Um, as a result, this is very quick, very easy, but still a very effective way 
of engaging your clients. So I found this actually quite useful myself. I've shown this to a lot of friends um, where I work at Architectus. We've tried this out a fair bit um, and it does have potential. Um, I hope people find it useful. I think it's a, a really great platform, super easy to use, super easy to share, and that's probably, I think, the biggest selling point of it. Um, and using the paid version does unlock some really nice features uh, that will make your experiences even more um, dynamic for, for the, uh, the viewer. Um, but otherwise, that's pretty much it. If you do have any questions about the workflow that I've used to go between these steps, um, feel free to leave them, um, but hopefully the workflow itself is clear enough. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, quick demonstration of Memento 360 and feel free to try it out and maybe let me know how you go, show me your end product and see how you go with it. Um, it's also just a really nice way to try out some different platforms that work together such as Datasmith, Twinmotion and Memento um, and get more value out of your Revit model um, than just doing still images or uh, expensive uh, computer expensive fly-through experiences. Um, so you can find most of my files over on my GitHub. I will put my twin motion model up there for anyone that does want a copy of it. Um, and I'll also put a link to the Memento experience in the comments of the video and keep that up as well. So thanks for watching today. Um, and you can contact me via email or leave a comment if you have any requests about future topics or just any queries about what I've shown you today. Uh, but I hope you have fun with the platform and I look forward to seeing you in future similar videos. Thanks. Take care. Bye.